Hey guys, welcome back to Kids Church Online and our series, Every Soul Matters to God. But what does the word matter mean? What does it mean if I say that you matter to me? What am I saying about you? When I say you matter, I mean that you're important to me, that I value you, you're valuable to me, you mean a lot to me. It means you're worth a lot to me. However, today we're not learning about the fact that I think you matter. We're learning about the fact that God himself says that you matter. Each of you, you matter. In fact, God says that every soul matters. Everyone matters to him. Isn't that crazy? But before we get too far in our lesson today, let's watch this video. It's Damaris. Today we are continuing our series, Every Soul Matters to God. Have you ever looked at someone and thought, they must not be very important? Maybe you saw a homeless man, someone from another country, someone who looks or sounds different than you, someone younger, or maybe you've looked in the mirror and said that about yourself. A lot of times we look at others and say they're not very important. Sometimes you even say that about yourself but God says something different. God doesn't rate each person on a scale and decide if one person is more important than the other. Nope, God loves everyone. Every soul matters to God. What does that mean? Not only did God make every soul, but He made all of them equally as important. He loves every single person, even you. God can do big things through anyone. God can use anyone to make a difference. Rich people, poor people, Big people, little people, adults, kids, tall people, short people, anyone. We all matter to Him. You'll learn more about this in your lesson today. Until next time, this is Damaris. See ya! Wow, it is so important to understand that every soul matters to God. Even you, you matter to God. God says that you matter. And God says that you will do amazing things with your life. The world doesn't always say that to us. And sometimes we may not really even feel that way, but it's true. So today we're going to learn more about that in our lesson. But first, let's go check in with our friend Boudreaux, who's going to teach us what you got to know. What you got to know, what you got to know. Time for Boudreaux, what you got to know. Hey there, kids, it's me, Boudreaux. That's pronounced Boudreaux. And I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning about how every soul matters to God, even yours. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them, Jesus died because you mattered to God. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> I just found out I matter to God. Well, as a matter of fact, I do too. Don't it feel great? It's so good to know that God thinks I matter. He says I'm important to Him, and you are too. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you got to know, you tell them, Jesus died because you mattered to God. And that right there is what you got to know. Well, I'm Boudreaux from the Bayou saying, bye-bye, you. Be? What you gotta know? What does it matter? I used to have the pep in my step to win. Ron? Rondi Reese? Is, is that you? Why are you so bummed? Yeah, it's me, Rondi Reese, but I lost the race that I was in this morning. I am defeated! I want my mommy. Oh, there, there, Ron. It, it's gonna be okay. Call me Sugar Pie. That's what my mom calls me. It'll make me feel better. Oh, and can you rock me too? Rocking helps. 
Um, there, there, sugar pie. Oh, mommy, if I can't win this race, then nothing matters to me, and I matter to no one. No, Ron, that's not true. Here, stand up here for a minute so we can talk. It's not true? I matter to God even though I'm a race loser? Mommy? Oh, Ron, no. I'm not mommy, and you're not my sugar pie. However, just because you lost the race doesn't make you a loser. Only one person can win the race. That doesn't make everybody else losers. Oh, it was against one other person. My cousin Amy. She's eight. You lost a race to an eight-year-old little girl? We have some strong women in my family. Oh, Ron, look, none of that matters. In fact, what matters is you. You matter to God. Jesus died because you matter to God. Really? Yes. Everyone matters to God. Jesus died for everyone in the whole world. Oh, yeah. That's some excellent news. That's the Rondi race we know and love. You love me? Yeah. You love me? 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 Uh, you love me? Rondi race, let's, let's not get carried away here. Well, now I gotta have a snack with my cousin, but I'll spread the word about God and Jesus and how everyone matters to God. Okay, well, good. Um, have a great snack with us, Speed Strainy. Thanks, I will. Later, Tater. Uh, after a while. See you later, Tile. Well, I be. What you gotta know? Today we're going to hear a story about a missionary. His name is Pastor Daniel and he lived in Africa. He decided to visit the people living in the jungle nearby. He wanted to find out how he could help the church there. So he took clothes, soap, and bags of rice for them. The journey was dangerous and difficult and many times Pastor Daniel was stopped by people at war in the jungle. He was actually even held at gunpoint and had to flee fighting more than once. That sounds scary. All along the way, Pastor Daniel discovered churches that were being started. As soon as he arrived at one village's church, the people began worshiping and praising God. He preached and prayed for them. And after service, he got in a canoe for a four hour trip to another village to have another service. Pastor Daniel sat in the canoe and listened to the captain of the canoe talk. He kept hearing him say something about the devil and wondered what he was talking about. He discovered that the captain of the canoe was an evil man whose name actually meant son of the devil. Ooh. Pastor Daniel knew he needed to tell this man about Jesus, so he spent the rest of the canoe ride preaching to the man named the son of the devil about how every soul matters to God, even his. During their four hour canoe trip up the river, the man ended up confessing his sins and accepting Jesus as his savior. When they landed at the next town, the church people gathered around this man and he was baptized in the river. It was a powerful moment. His life was changed and he wanted everyone to know. In fact, because his life was changed, he decided to change his name from son of the devil to angel of light. He was overjoyed by his new name. He was excited to know that he mattered to God. Today in your lesson, you're going to learn that every soul matters to God, just like the captain of the canoe did. Even people who seem like they surely don't matter to God, like a man named son of the devil, absolutely do matter to God. He loves everyone the same, and that means you matter to God. Have a great week. Bye. Well, I be. What you gotta know? Hey, Chihuahua! You're barking up the wrong tree! <laughs> oh, hey there, boys and girls! My name's Kent. Kent Hiria. I'm 86 years old, so I'm a little bit hard of hearing. But I'm here to teach you today's power verse. And today's power verse says, For this is how God loved the world, 
He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Wow, that was a wonderful verse, wasn't it? Now, I tell you what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to say it with me and say it loud. After all, I am a little hard of hearing. If you can say it so loud that my loud meter gets all the way up to 10, then we're going to get to do something really fun to my nephew. For some reason, Perry said he wants me to tase him with my taser. Okay, so here we go. On the count of three, make it loud. One, two, three. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. No, oh, that was pretty good, pretty good. But I still can't hear you. <laughs> Get it? All right, we're going to try it one more time, but this time I want it to be loud. Let's get this thing all the way up to 10, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Great job, great job. That was very loud. Oh, here comes my nephew now. <laughs> hey there, Terry. Uncle Kent, my name is Gary. Oh, whatever. Hey, listen, you remember the other day when you told me you needed a tasing? What? No, I never said that. I said I feel amazing. Not I need a tasing. I feel amazing. Oh, well. This isn't going to make you feel amazing, but if you insist... Oh, ouch, that hurts. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, listen, boys and girls, I know it's shocking, but I have to go. So until next time, this is your old buddy Kent saying, see ya, but I can't hear ya. <laughs>
not just some people, he designed every person. So on the count of three, I want you to say that with me. Are you ready? One, two, three. God designed every person. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, that's in the Old Testament, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, in your mother's tummy. And this is God letting us know that he formed you before you were born. He took time on every part of you, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your personality, your gifts, your talents. And God designed each of us individually. And guess what? We are his masterpieces. Have you ever thought about that? You are God's masterpiece. So like an artist who designed a beautiful painting, God took his time on every part of us, every part of you as he created and designed us. And we have to learn to see ourselves from his perspective. Then we will see how wonderful we really are. And it's kind of like this. I bought a painting the other day and I couldn't bring it with me, but I have a picture of it. So I want you to check it out. Check out this first picture. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I guess you're looking at it too close. Okay, let me back it up a little bit. Are you ready for the second one? Okay, look at this picture. Well, still doesn't look quite right, does it? Okay, I'm gonna show you it again from the perspective of the artist. Are you ready for the third one? Okay, here it is. When you see the painting, the way the artist saw it, as he painted it, you can see it is very beautiful, right? And it's the same thing with us. When you see yourself the way God, the master artist, your designer sees you, you will begin to see how much you matter. And I tell my boys this all the time when they say things like, I'm so stupid, mom, I just am an idiot. I'm like, no, you're not. God created you in his image and you are his masterpiece. And I have to tell myself that too. I am God's masterpiece. He designed me to be the way I am. And so I don't like negative self-talk. So when my boys talk like that, I want to correct them. And I tell myself the same thing because sometimes I can think, oh man, if I just look like this, or if I just could have this, or if I, no, God designed me. I'm his masterpiece. Just like a beautiful painting. He created each of us to be his masterpiece. Another important thing that the Bible tells us about how much we matter, are you ready for this? Is that God paid a high price for every person. So I want you to say that with me. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. God paid a high price for every person. Some kids think they're worthless right? Somebody might tell you, you're not good at doing this. You're not good at doing that. Oh, if only you could do this, or only if you wore this certain type of clothes, or only if your eyes didn't look like that, right? And they think they're worth nothing at all. But how do you know what something is worth? So I have a copy of this. Do you guys know what this is? This is a baseball card. Obviously it's not the baseball card, right? And this is Babe Ruth. He's a famous baseball player. I know some of you are laughing. You're like, Pastor Julie, you don't know anything about sports, but I know who Babe Ruth is, okay? And it's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of cardboard, right? But many baseball cards are sold for thousands of dollars, okay? In fact, one baseball card was even sold for two and a half million dollars. Really, I would not spend that much money on a baseball card, but some people do. And what makes it worth that much? simply the fact that someone is willing to pay the price for it. And if no one was willing to pay the price that much, it wouldn't be worth that, right? Nobody would want it. It's only worth whatever someone is willing to pay for it. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, and that's in the New Testament, it says, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. What price is that? Well, he sent his one and only son to die in our place. When we deserve to die because of our sin, God paid the price for our freedom by sending his son to die in our place. So the next time you think you're worthless, you remember that you are worth a lot to God and you matter to him. Okay? 
God sent his son to die for you. And that means you are so priceless and you are his masterpiece and he loves you so very much. So our last point today says this, Jesus died to prove that you matter. So on the count of three, you're gonna say that with me. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Jesus died to prove that you matter. Point to yourself when you say that. Jesus died to prove that you matter. And our power verse today says, remember, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone not just certain people, everyone who believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. John 3, 16. You matter so much to God that he sent his son Jesus to die for you, to pay the price for your sin. So it's time to understand God's message to us. And it says, every soul matters to God. So I want you to say that with me again. Every soul matters matters to God. Don't look at yourself through wrong thoughts that we discussed today. Don't let people tell you, oh, well, if you could just do this better, or if you just had this color hair, don't let people tell you that because they're wrong. God designed you to be his masterpiece. So I want you to look at yourself the way God does. See yourself as a masterpiece designed by God, paid for by his life of his son, Jesus, who he loved more than anything else in the world. You matter. Every soul matters to God. Every soul, every person you see in the world matters to God. And he loves you so much, he designed you to be the way you are. So don't let the world tell you something. Sorry, there's a plane flying over. (laughs) Don't let the world tell you something that's not true because you are God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. So I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to pray for those of you who struggle maybe with your self-worth. Like, I don't feel good enough. Or I wish, man, I just wish I could be someplace different. Or I could be somebody different. So I'm going to pray that you'll remember that you are God's masterpiece created in his image. And every soul matters to God. So would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much that you loved us so much that you sent your beloved son to die for us, to pay the price for us. God, we thank you that we are your masterpiece. You designed us the way you wanted us to be. And so I just pray for all of us out there who are watching this and are struggling today with thinking they're not good enough. They don't have any worth. God, that you would remind us that we are your masterpiece. We are created in your image and you love us so very much. God, help us to understand that today and to not compare ourselves to other people, to not listen to negative talk that people tell us, but to always remember that God, you loved us so much that you sent your son and we are your masterpiece created in your image. We love you and we just thank you so much for the Bible that tells us what we need to know and how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I love you guys, and I hope you're ready to sing. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. You know what time it is. Let's all stand up and we're going to worship.
So these last couple weeks, I hope you have realized how much every soul matters to God, because they do. Every single one of us. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter if maybe you can't run as fast or maybe you talk differently than others. Every soul matters to God. And He loves each and every one of us. And we are God's masterpiece. We need to remember that we're created in God's image. And we, we need to love others the same way that God loves them. So we shouldn't be judging other people for what they look like or what they're not wearing that they should be wearing. We need to remember that every soul matters to God. And if we choose to follow Jesus, we need to be like that. Every soul matters to God. Okay, be encouraged that you matter to God. Your friends matter to God. Every single person on this earth matters to God. And He loves us so much and He doesn't want any of us to perish. So when you go about your day, when you're outside with your friends, when you go to the grocery store, when you go to, maybe you go to daycare and you see kids that don't know Jesus and that don't feel love, you need to be that person. You need to be the person that says, every soul matters to God. You matter to God. He loves you. And because I love him, I love you. So be an example to others. You can do that. The little children shall lead them. And you guys are kids. I'm not a kid. I act like a kid sometimes. I can lead people. You can lead people. But we want everyone to know that every soul matters to God. And you can be a part of that because you love Jesus. Next week, we're starting a new series on forgiveness. I'm excited. It's a five-week series. So that's going to start next Sunday. And I want to see that you guys are doing this. I know online outside churches started and we haven't seen a lot of people post there's still a couple people but i would love for you to post that you're doing kids church online or even when you come to church outside snap a picture with me socially distant and let's post it so that we can show people that we're still being involved in church i love you guys and i hope you're having a great week I want all of you, you'll never change your love.